Hello, this is Pastor Jeff. We want to thank you for joining us for this online worship experience. I hope you're blessed by this word today. And if you want to know more about Hope Church, you can visit us at this website below me, realchurchforrealpeople.com.
first verse it says for where your treasure is there your heart will be also where your treasure is there your heart will be also so understand in this context when you talk about treasure and you talk about heart the writer's saying these go together and this is a great scripture sometimes that we look at when we talk about giving, but today I want to kind of look at it from a different context. I want you to think about this question. What do you treasure here on earth? I'm just so glad to be in church today. Yes, I'm telling amen. you, I just, you feel. So when I say the word treasure, you really think of something that you value. And understand, we all have things that we value, common things that we value, whether it be your family, whether it be maybe your children, your health. We value our relationship with God. But when I was thinking about treasure, I also understand that there's things that maybe we value that other people look at it and say, that has no value to me at all. And some of the things that we value, people would look at it and say it's just junk. And maybe you have a family heirloom or something that's been passed down to you from generation to generation. I have something I, I value. It's, it's kind of silly, and people look at it. It's a handful of rocks. And most people would say, what did you do, go out in the driveway and pick them up? Well, I value them because when I was able to go to Israel, to the Sea of Galilee, I was able to pick them up out of the Sea of Galilee and hold them in my hand and put them in my suitcase, and somehow I got them through customs, and I brought them home. I don't know if you're allowed to do that or not, but I have a handful of gravel from the Sea of Galilee. That's something that is special to, to me. And we all have things that we treasure. And what a treasure is, it really is anything that means something to you, anything that holds value to you. That's why Jesus, when he was talking, he said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And I want to look at a story in a Bible today about a lady who treasured some things. And she treasured what she treasured, and her heart was actually in the wrong place, and it led to her being lost. Do you realize three times in Scripture, everybody say one, two, three. One, two, three. Three times in Scripture, Jesus told us to remember. He used this word, remember. And today I want to look at just one of the times that Jesus said Remember, And he was talking in Luke, the 17th chapter, and he's talking about the end of time, and he's talking about the kingdom. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of him teaching, he says three words in Luke 17 and 32. And this is what he said. It's on the screen. He said, remember Lot's wife. That's it. And I was wondering, why did Jesus single her out? Jesus could have said, remember the hero of faith, Abraham. Remember Isaac. Remember Jacob. Remember David. Remember Ruth. Remember Esther. But no, he singled out this one person, and he said, remember Lot's wife. And understand the context. When Jesus was speaking, he wasn't speaking to the scribes or Pharisees. This was Jesus having a conversation with his disciples. He was talking to his people. He was talking to his friends. He was talking to the disciples that he was pouring into. And Jesus is talking about the end of days. He's talking about the second coming. And all of a sudden, in the middle of it, he says, remembers Lot's wife. Understand that I believe he was looking at the state of unreadiness that they really were experiencing. And Lot's wife was a person that was so blessed. But sometimes we are so blessed that we cannot see the blessings that we have right in front of us. Come on. I said sometimes we don't count our blessings. Sometimes we ignore our blessings. It's so, it's so easy to see the things that we do not have. And when we do that, we, we, we belittle the things that we do have. And understand, this woman lived a privileged life. And I'm going to give you a little context about Lot's wife. She had the privilege of knowing 
God. She had the privilege of having a righteous husband. She had the privilege of having a godly uncle by marriage, Abraham. She had the privilege of, I'm sure, watching Abraham build altars. She had the privilege of watching her husband, who was taken captive, be delivered. And now she has the privilege of angels appearing and wanting to deliver them from the city that is about to be destroyed. And when you read about her life, I will say this. She knew too much to be lost. I said she knew too much to be lost. And if you were sitting here today, I want you to know, you know too much to be lost. You're in a church we preach Jesus. We believe that he is the only way to salvation. He is the Savior. Amen. We believe that we're all sinners and we need to repent of our sins. We need to be water baptized. We want to be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. We preach Jesus. And if you're preaching Jesus, you know too much to be lost. She had so many blessings in front of her, but yet she was destroyed. We're going to pick up the story in Genesis. If you have your Bible, I would challenge you this week, read this story for yourself because there's so much I can't tell you because I don't have enough time. So I'm just going to tell you what I can tell you in the time we have. And it starts in Genesis, and we're going to go to Genesis 19, and we're going to just go ahead and read the 15th verse. And, and let me set the context. The angels came. The, the city was going to be destroyed. And they told Lot, they said, get your family and get out of the city because it's going to be destroyed because of its evil, because of its wickedness. And then we see in the 15th verse, watch this. Go ahead and read this, Brayden. When ahead. the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. So the angels said, Listen, you got to get out of here. This city is going to be destroyed. Go ahead. <laughs> and while he lingered, the men took hold of his hands, his wife's hands, and the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. Not only was they told in what direction to go to, but the angels were so merciful, they actually took them by the hand and said, leave the city. Amen. Let me tell you, God's always with you. He's always holding your hand. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Even when I don't understand it and see it, I know he's working things out for my good. And it doesn't mean everything's always going to be good, but it means he's working it out. And I'll understand some things better by and by, and sometimes I won't understand it at all. But that's okay. I know God has my hand. And here's these angels leading them out of the city. And you think they'd be like, shh, thank God we're being delivered. We're not going to be destroyed. They're leading us out of the city. Not only are they telling us direction, they're actually holding our hands and taking us out of the city. And they brought them outside of the city. Watch this, verse 17. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, escape for your life. Do not look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed. So they took him out of the city and watch, here was a direct command. Look what they said. They said, do not look what? Behind you. Do not look behind you. If you look behind you, you're going to be destroyed. And guess what? Lot's wife, and if you drop down to the 26th verse, this is why Jesus said, remember her. Because she looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Wow, she was destroyed. Because she looked back and disobeyed the direct commandments from God. And as she looked back, and I begin to think about this, why did she look back? What caused her to look back? Well, really, God sees what's going on inside of here. In the heart. How many times have we heard of people falling? How many times have we heard of people doing terrible things that we think, man, they seem like a good person? Well, guess what? Only God can see what's going on inside of here. You can fool your spouse. You can fool your kids. You can fool your pastor. You can fool your friends. But God sees what's going on inside of our heart. And only he can see that. That's why the writer said, created me a clean heart. In other words, a new heart. As she looked back, it revealed her true character. It revealed that she was disobedient. It really revealed the condition of her heart. Maybe she doubted that God was really going to do what he said he was going to do. Maybe she thought that she knew better than God. Maybe she thought that she could just get one little glimpse of looking behind her. And she disobeyed the direct commandment that God spoke. 
And she ignored what God asked her to do. And I want to tell you, church, listen to me. We need to take the commandments of God seriously. I said, we need to love what the word of God says, and we need to walk the walk and talk the walk. And sometimes we have a tendency to rationalize our sin. Sometimes we'll say, it's just a little white lie. It's just a one-time event. It's just a, a, a lifetime opportunity. And really what happens is there's a battle of wills. It's our will against God's will. And God's will is always right, and sometimes our will is wrong. And sometimes we'll say, well, it really doesn't matter and sometimes we will take and, and we will take the word of God and we will twist it and try to manipulate it and try to make it say what it doesn't say so we can justify our sin let me tell you we do not twist the word of God it's forever settled amen if God says it we believe it and that settles it <laughs> and I wonder are you willing to give up things in your life to be obedient and pleasing to God one of the things I think we all struggle with, whether we realize it or not, is authority issues. Who likes to be told what to do? If you raise your hand, there's probably something wrong with you. Because nobody likes to be told what to do. But understand, when God gives us a command, we need to be obedient because God's plan is always the best plan. And the problem is, is Lot's wife thought that she knew best, and that's why she looked in the wrong direction. That's why Paul said this. He said, I'm pressing toward the mark, forgetting those things that are behind me. In other words, you have to look in the direction that you're going. Who walks like this? Try it. See what happens. Has anybody ever got... Knocked in the noggin because you're looking back and you're walking and bam, like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Absolutely, because you weren't looking in the right direction. And we got to keep looking in the right direction. Man, I'm just glad to be here today. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes I have to just take a minute and look around just to make sure that uh, I think we're all headed in the same direction here. We're looking forward, right? What was the problem with Lot's wife is she did, couldn't get past her past. I said she couldn't get past her past. And sometimes we spend so much time mourning the things that we have left and mourning the things that we have lost. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I want you all to listen clearly. If you don't get anything else and you say, man, I, I, I'm checking out, listen real quick, all right? Get this, all right? You got something today. I want to tell you this. It's going to be our little secret, all right? Not one person say it soft so I want you to hear me not one person has ever been able to go back and change or fix their past I said not one person has ever been able to go back and change or fix their past you understand that it's okay sometimes to to mourn our losses and mourn over broken dreams and missed opportunities. But we have to learn not to dwell on it because we cannot go back and fix it. Because guess what? The past is past, but there's life ahead of you crying out to you for your attention. And this woman lost her focus. She was living in her past when God was calling her to a new future. What is past is over. You can't change it. It's complete. It's finished. It's history. You got to keep your eyes on the prize. Amen. And the problem is, is she struggled with leaving what she was used to. She wanted to hold on to what she had. And what she had was comfort. And let me tell you this. In this walk, if you ever become comfortable, you become complacent. I said, if you ever become just comfortable in this walk with God, you become complacent. And the enemy loves complacent Christianity. I said, the enemy loves complacent Christianity. How do you tell if you're complacent? Let me just give you a couple things. When's the last time you invited somebody to come to church? When's the last time you've been overwhelmed by looking around and realizing you have family members and friends that don't know Jesus. And it brought so much anguish that you begin to just cry out to God and say, God, please save their soul however you choose to do it. When we spend more time binge watching Netflix than we do reading God's word, there's a problem. When we spend more time worrying about the latest fashions and trends than we do spending time in prayer, there's a problem. 
We slip into this comfort of complacency. And the enemy loves it when we just stay complacent. It's time for the people of God to rise up and be the people of God. Amen. I said it's time for the people of God to rise up and be the people of God. So back to Mrs. Lot. She held on, but she missed out on the great opportunity that God was giving her and her family. She, God was giving them a new start. God was taking all the old baggage that was in Sodom, all the disappointments, all the discouragement, and he wanted to give them new life. I've said it so many times, and I understand this is simple, but it's so simple that it's hard to do. We cannot embrace what God has for us if we hold on to what we used to have. I cannot embrace the new if I'm holding on to the old. It's impossible. Today's the day that God wants to release from some things in your life. God wants to free you today. And when the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. Yes, amen. Yes. Understand that this isn't anything new in our, our walk with God. This isn't anything new in society. A lot of times people want to return to the things that were comfort to them and they find comfort in things that are even not normal because they're used to it. Look at the children of Israel. God delivered them from slavery and then they get out into the desert and all of a sudden they start turning on their leader. Pastor Moses had some crazy saints too. And he's, they started to turn on their leader and now they're saying, let's go back to Egypt. In other words, let's go back to slavery. Let's go back to bondage. Why? Because that's what they were used to. Some of you, God is wanting to free you, and you're already free in your heart, but the mind has not been released yet because you're thinking of the things of old and thinking, I'm always going to be this way. This is always going to be a part of me. And God says, no, I want to renew you and set you free because the Bible says when he frees us, we are what? Free indeed. Everybody say free indeed. So we see these people and they call it relapsing. And sometimes people return to things that bring them comfort. It could be, it could be a relationship. It's a not a good relationship. And yet people go back into the relationship because it sort of brings them some sort of comfort. It could be uh, some people relapse and they run back to the bottle. Because it's a sense of comfort. Some people relapse and they run back to their porn addiction. Come on. Come on. Because it brings them some sort of comfort. They run back to, to pills. They run back to addictions. Why? Because it, old things sometimes can bring you comfort. Because you're afraid to embrace the new and the old things are right there. And let me tell you this. The thing that was old one time was new to you. And you didn't want to embrace it. You know... Let me illustrate it this way. This might be the best way. Does anybody have a phone? Yes. All right. This phone, one point, I hated it because I had to get a new one, and I didn't want to let go of my old one because I hate having to get a new phone, and I hated this phone. Now, if I have to get a new one, I'm going to hate getting a new one because I'm used to this old phone. The thing that I hate it, now I'm comfortable with. Understand me? That's why you see some of these people. You know they still sell flip phones? Because some people think if it don't flip, it ain't any good. Because they find comfort in the flip phone. And they're still out there, believe it or not. Right? Because sometimes somebody said, mine works good, right? <laughs> you got something to say about my flip phone preacher? We're going to have some problems today, right? It works great. Probably gets better service than these anyway. But <laughs> they were durable. You could throw them like these. You drop them now. even got a screen protector on them. And I had to get a new one because I cracked the old one. I dropped it in a little bit of water. And it's supposed to be waterproof, but it stopped working. I don't know. But anyway, with those old phones, you know how they're so durable? Like you can throw them off a roof and they'd be fine but anyway all right i just defended jim and robin i'm sorry to you too now i know that you had to leave thanks for coming to church we love you all right have fun god bless all right see and i was gonna say that i was gonna do that yeah yeah making your grand exit okay huh? god bless you man this must be getting pretty bad people are starting to walk out on there 
No, I have to pick on her. She did tell me we had to go somewhere today. My motto's always been, if you do have to leave early, that's fine, all right? Just come to church. Get what you can, right? I mean, sometimes right. things come out. People, well, I have to leave 1130. Well, come for an hour, all right? Be part of the, the worship, all right? So anyway, let's get back to this story, all right? We're going to land this plane here in a few minutes, all right? I got sidetracked talking about phones. Sorry about that. But hopefully you uh, understand what I'm talking about, right? You get it? So what was Lot's wife? She's really conquered by her worldliness. Understand that this wasn't a woman that we would look at and say she's a murderer, adulterer, stealing, none of that. What was it that made her look back? It was her love for the world. I want to tell you, be careful when you become so absorbed with the things of the world. Listen, young men, be careful. Sometimes we can get so wrapped up in amusement and sports and gaming. And maybe it's, it's a, some sort of sexual addiction. You get wrapped up in these things. And ladies, sometimes you get so wrapped up in, you know, it has to be designer and the shoes and the dress and the things you wear or how many likes you get on social media. And those things are so important to us. And sometimes in the church world, the world has even creeped into the church world. Sometimes we forget that we are not here to be like the world. We are here to win the world. Amen? Let me put it like this. Maybe you understand. Sometimes we become so preoccupied with keeping up with the Joneses instead of trying to get the Joneses saved. Wow. Yeah. Maybe don't worry about keeping up with them. Maybe worrying about praying for their souls to be saved. Amen? And that's what happens. Sometimes we get the world is creeped in. We become so self-absorbed. You know what? There was a consequence for her actions by looking back. Guess what happened? She lost the greatest gift that God was giving her. Freedom. Freedom. He was giving her a moment for her family to be saved. Let me tell you this. Stop trying to make the best of both worlds. Be all in. Be all in. The Bible tells us clearly we cannot serve God and man. you got to choose you this day. Who will you serve? And I will be on the Lord's side. So as we reflect on this story, and I want you to read it this week, and in closing, as the team comes and gets ready, as we reflect on, on this story, I want us just to take a moment and reflect on our own life. And I want to say something. I want you to hear this clearly. You're not going to be here forever. Right. You're not. Nobody lives forever here. We are eternal. But this life and this body is not made to last forever. If you don't believe in change, just pull out some pictures from 20 years ago if you're that old and look. And some are like, wow. I used to be quite a studly man. That's what happened. Somewhere underneath all this, it's still there, I guess, but... God's working, right? But change happens, and the reality is, is we're not going to live forever, and it's, it's... The day will come, and we'll have our appointment with the Lord. One day, you'll hear your final sermon, and one day, you'll pray your final prayer, and, and one day, you'll close your eyes, and you'll transition before the Lord and one day it'll be your last chance to lift your hands here on earth and worship the Lord and I wonder if we become so careless about the fact that God's coming back if we become so lukewarm or cold are we secretly like Lot's wife cherishing things that are behind us and maybe you're cherishing and holding on to some some secret maybe sin in our life and maybe some of us we just become religiously privileged and we think that we're good to go and we don't cry anymore we don't pray anymore we don't spend time with God anymore and sometimes we're just saying you know what I got lots of life to live in the moment in a moment we could be here in this world and be gone in a moment and I don't mean to to be doom and gloom and make this heavy but I want you to understand that God is reaching for us today and God's and Jesus said these words to remember Lot's wife for a reason because there's a story there and there's a lady there that had a family that was a real lady but she did not embrace the command of God to move forward and she looked back to her past looked back to the thing that God was trying to bring her out of and ultimately by her looking back it led to her demise Maybe she longed for the things that she was leaving. And she missed out on that great opportunity of what God was doing in her family's life by looking back. 
saints of God, as you stand to your feet in this place, I want you to understand the scripture says, and watch this, I want you to read this on the screen with me. If you could put up Isaiah 43. It says what? Jesus told us to remember Lot's wife, and here it's tell us, do not remember the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Why do we forget the former things? Why do we forget the old things? And then all of a sudden, he gives us the reason. Watch this. He says, behold, I will do a new thing. Amen? God wants to do a new thing. But he cannot do the new thing in your life if you will not release the old. Some of you in this place right now, I feel this in my spirit. We're just going to flow with what the Lord's leading right now. Some of you are carrying a spirit of rejection. You've been rejected by people and you've been hurt by people and they've disappointed you and you put your faith in people and I'm telling you what, people are flawed. Never put all your hope and faith in people. Because today there's one here. His name is Jesus. And let me tell you, he will never reject you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And he wants to do a new thing in your life. Just like he did for Lot. Just like God said for Lot and his family and the wife. And said, I'm doing a new thing. She couldn't embrace it. Why couldn't she embrace it? Because she wanted to hold on to the past. If I could get every head in this place bowed for a moment. Every head. I'm looking over his place. Now's an opportunity. I want every head bowed in this place. This is a holy moment right now. Every head bowed in this place right now. With your eyes closed, God has brought us to a holy moment. And not only did the writer say that God wants to do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. Ye shall not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. As Lot, his wife, two daughters were walking with the angels holding their hand. As they're walking in the wilderness, little did they know that God was making a way of escape. And as they're walking, I could imagine maybe in my mind Lot saying, are you back there, girls? We're here, Dad. We're here. Honey, are you there? I'm here. And all of a sudden, as she hears the destruction behind her at a moment, saying, I'm just going to turn back and take one more glance, one more look at what I'm leaving. When she was told not to look back, and all of a sudden, as they're walking, maybe Lot says, are you okay, girls? We're here, Daddy. Don't look back. Honey, are you back there? And all he hears is silence. Honey, are you back there? And all he hears is silence. And I could imagine as the man's walking, he knew what happened. And he couldn't even look back to see if she was okay. But his tears began to stream down his face. And this shows us this. That everybody has to stand before God for themselves. Your spouse can't save you. Mommy and daddy can't save you. You stand before him yourself. You and him. Do you want to embrace the new today? you want to come today and lay down the spirit of rejection? Do you want to come today and lay down some defeat and discouragement? Do you want to come today and say those old things? I'm placing them down today because God has a new thing. He has a new start. Today's a day I'm going to get past my past. Today's a day that I'm going to say, Lord, I'm not letting this past define me. I'm moving forward. I'm not looking back. I'm moving forward.